Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. We actually have the Mike McCarthy press conference, and uh, some of our worst fears are kind of unfolding in front of us because they're having a couple more players that are going to be added to the COVID list. I believe Connor Williams, it may be that he's sick and being tested, and Demontre Kazee as well. Let's actually go to the press conference here live, and we'll give you the details. COVID list going into the day. COVID update. We have uh, two players uh, that, are, that will go on the COVID um, testing positive list today. Uh, KZ uh, has, has tested positive in Connor Williams. Uh, we also have a few players that are being looked at right now that have other illnesses um, and may not practice. So one for sure is Trayvon Dix. And what is Dix's situation? Is it on us? Okay. He has an illness, yeah. Okay. But not related to COVID? Correct. Non, Non-COVID, I guess. Donovan Wilson left practice early. Is he COVID related or is it something else? Something else, yes. What is this? Uh, groin injury. And when you have this, it's not unusual to have a run at a position because of how the groupings are. How is there, what will you do now at safety because you're obviously pretty thin? Well, we're in the you know contact contact tracing mode, uh, so we're working through that. Um, but you know, like anything that's been you know part of this process, you know, we take it very serious. So you know, we're looking at alterations to our schedules and making sure our meeting places are, are the best they can be. So you know, we will start to alter uh, our schedule starting tomorrow. Any higher level of concern for you today versus yesterday, just based on the growing list? Well, I mean, just we've had one more really since yesterday. I mean, uh, KZ was was um, you know was in that in between status, so uh, he now is not. And then Connor, you know, tested uh, positive. So you ever how the you know the, the contact tracing goes, and you know just. We're going to play the high side of caution, just like we have with everything. So we take gotcha. it very serious, and you know we'll do what we need to do. How will you alter the schedule going forward? More of a virtual component uh, tomorrow. Is there, if this thing continues to uh, outbreak continues, I mean, is there been any talk about do you play Sunday and things like that? I mean, I know uh, you have guys in the roster. Yeah, we're 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 planning on playing. On Sunday, I'm, I'm just you know focusing on what we need to accomplish today on the field, especially getting out in the heat. It didn't go very well for us yesterday. I mean, I think it's part of it was expected, uh, you know, practicing in the heat for the first time. So we need to need to do a better, much better job of that. But also, you know, our, we're we're short in certain areas, so we got to be smart the way we practice. Uh, we're also introducing the in season Wednesday schedule for the first time, so I want to get through that today. Um, so, for, you know, we, we, for the most part, we've been able to accomplish that this morning. So, uh, still trying to keep us on target for what we wanted to get done this week. Do you anticipate any any of the players who are in it right now, or Dan Quinn for that matter, will are they in a time frame where they could be back and do something for the Jacksonville game if you need them? I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, everybody's status is different based on you know. The, le- the level of testing. I mean, there's so many variables to this. Um, so uh, I, I just operate on day by day and make sure that everybody's getting the support that they need, you know, the classification that they're in. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't have timelines for each for each individual. Mike, you mentioned introducing the in-season Wednesday schedule. How different will it look from last year's in-season Wednesday schedule or is it much? To you? Yeah, I would look a lot different to me. Um, so I mean, we're doing offense, defense meetings before special teams meeting. That's a huge change for everybody. But no, just little, little things like that. So it's more getting the, the organization of uh, what the meetings look like, how they're broken down. You know, how much time you spend with a group, individual. So just just things that it's why you have exit interviews. I mean, it's it's why you look at things uh, in depth right after the season's over. Um, because to me, I, I always felt that. The way you train your team, the way you practice your team, the way you meet your team, is is it's part of the competition. So uh, we just want to make sure we get that introduced, and so come next week, it's it's pretty much a review. Will Donovan Wilson practice today? Uh, he will not. With the nature of his groin injury and terms of severity, do you guys have a sense of? I don't have a sense. No, he, he won't practice today. So. Yeah. 
the openers two weeks from tomorrow. Mike asked this yesterday, but just kind of again today with the way this is developing, you still feel pretty good about things getting back a little better before that opener. I don't know what better means. I mean, I mean, this is the climate that we're in. Uh, so um, we, the, the 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 great thing is we have experience at it. So uh, I, I think clearly when the adjustments are made uh, throughout the football operations, you know, we have clear options. You know, we, we have we have we have plans that have been used. Uh, we, you know, we move from one segment of you know normality to you know half virtual. You know, half in. You know, in, in you know, working inside, you know, based off what we're trying to get done that day. So, um, you know, we, we're we're prepared to handle this. You know, so uh, we're very fortunate with our facility that, you know, the spacing of it, it's not it's not a challenge. So we we've been able to you know, adjust meetings seamlessly because uh, the end of the day, you want the flow and the continuity of a work day to not affect the players. And, and I and I and I feel that has not happened. Will your stay days or your walkthroughs change at all because of what's been going on? Well, I mean, we're scheduled to have a stay day tomorrow, but we won't, you know, we, we won't have that. So, uh, but, you know, the on the field work will stay pretty much the same as the goal. Having only four safeties at practice, how does that change the flow of practice? Well, it's a challenge. I mean, the whole secondary is short, so you know, we'll, we'll regulate that. But, um, you know, we, there's some things we need to get done. So we have a full. Practice slated, and if I need to adjust it while we're out there, you know I will. What's the benefit of practicing in the heat? The benefit? Yeah. Well, the reality of it is we're gonna we're gonna compete in it. So I mean, it's it's an it's an arena that we need to be, uh, you know, comfortable in. You know, get ready for. Um, so I mean, it's it's more the mental and uh, the focus component that, that I'm after. These, you know, I have great confidence in our players and how they prepare you know, as far as the hydration and so forth. But I think like anything, there's a newness to it. I know we live here. I, I, we all understand the climate, but we have not, you know, yesterday was our first practice that's been that hot in quite some time. So um, I'm hoping to get as many, as, many, as many attempts as possible in that heat before we go to Tampa. What will Greg Zerline do in practice today? Um, he's going to kick. I mean, I, I'm not going to count on exactly how number, but we, we're going to we're going to work back through his his regiment to hopefully so he can kick Sunday. How did Cooper uh, look yesterday? Yeah. So Cooper had a solid day. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't say it was our best practice. You know, we we had you know we had a lot of things going on. Uh, you know, up front. Uh, so, uh, but I thought he had a solid day. We, we focused on the COVID, but do you feel pretty good about all of the players who are coming back off of injuries that you've managed through training camp, where they are to be ready to go for the opener? I'm talking about from last year? Yeah. Yes, I, I feel that the rehab uh, process uh, has definitely been tilted you know, to the side of caution, and, and I, I think we're seeing the, the benefits from that now. Like anything, you know, we, you know, I, I try to get more time with those guys together. I'm a little, you know, focused on the offense. Group because you know they haven't had a lot of time you know together as the as the first group so you know Dak will do more today uh, so he'll be closer to a a full status you know of any time that he's been since since his injury so uh, that'll you know that'll definitely help. Did, I think yesterday you did group pass. Um, is there more in addition to that that he'll do today in competitive throwing? You yeah, he's that? going to do some competitive throwing today. Is that seven on seven? Yesterday? Yes. Like this, this fourth preseason game, uh, obviously you've been playing some of the younger guys a long time. Can you name a guy who you can top of your head who you went into the game saying, we just need to keep our other guys from getting hurt, and just jumped up and you said, Lord, we better take a longer look at this guy. And that guy made your 53, not your practice squad. Since you've been a head coach and had input into the roster. For a guy who's, you said, well, we overlooked this. I mean, I, should I be laughing right now or what? I mean, I mean what I, should I answer? Why would I answer that question here today? <laughs> he seems he doesn't mean this team. He means going into the fourth game. Oh. I think Jay Kumaro was one of those guys in Green Bay. Um, uh, Tim Boyle, quarterback. I'm just you know going going back through the years. It wasn't the fourth game, but Matt Flynn was a guy that just kept building, building, building. You know, as as he went through, um, trying to think of some of the defensive guys. Sam Shields, you know, when he was, um, you know, 
uh, free agent uh, receiver from Miami. So, no, it happens because I, I thought you were trying to get into my fifth. I, I, I've been spending a little time in the personnel department lately, so I'm a little sensitive to the pre-53 list. I don't cut players. Where are the conversations like? What are those conversations like without going into, obviously, details about Prizing this 53 man roster and just the back and forth of what keeping one guy means or keeping another? I mean, from my perspective, I, I just want to make sure they all get the opportunity. So, I mean, I, I want to make sure that, you know, we, we have all the information. You know, now we're fortunate that not only did we have the fourth preseason game, but our, our younger players have played excessively, you know, throughout the preseason. So, I, I feel like we're, we're in good shape there. So, um, but. You know, I, th I think it's an, I think it's like it's in every, every, every place I've ever worked. I mean, you have a you know you have a personnel department uh, opinion, you have a coaching department opinion, and you have the finance part, component of it too. So I mean, it, all those things have to come together, and you make the best decisions that you can. There you go. Mike, before Donovan's injury, where was he impressing you most in training camp? Well, just that he's back. You know, coming off, you know, he had some things he was working on. Coming out of the off-season program, so you know, I, I thought he was definitely one of the bright spots of our defense last year. So, you know, his uh, leadership was growing. You know, I th he's a di uh, you know I love the way he plays. You know, he's an impact player. He's made impact plays for us uh, last year. I mean, he's definitely the description of you know playing aggressive to the ball, taking the ball away is what you're looking for in the in the secondary. So, uh, I guess the biggest thing I've been impressed with him is just to see his leadership grow. He's you know he's elected to the player council. So I think that speaks volumes of, you know, how he's viewed in, inside of our football operations. The audit didn't do as much in team drills yesterday. Was that just about getting guys ready for the fourth preseason game or what was the thinking there? You know, really a lot of it had to do also what we were working on. I mean, there's certain things, there's certain things that we wanted to get reps on. Uh, there's some, there some plays particularly, uh, not just last week's game, but last week's, we had the same type of practice, uh, the blue and white practice. Yes, this practice was similar to the blue and white. So there's some install things that, you know, we wanted to get with Connor you know, and, and, and frankly, Connor had a couple things in the game that we wanted to make sure he got repped again. So there, there's a, a number of moving parts and how guys lined up yesterday. You have a nucleus that, that has been together for a while and this offense has, but hasn't had a lot of time on task leading up to a game. Does, how does it allow you to accelerate or, or get ready? Do, are you able to jump over some fundamentals or some things you would normally do? Or, or do you always start right there and just build back? Well, I, I think that's why you have camp. That's why you practice together. I, I think the continuity uh, the fundamentals is critical, and I, I think that's been reflected in September football since 2011. In my opinion, I, I don't want to get on my soapbox here, but you know, the lack of training camp, lack lack of time together, to me, has showed up around the, the National Football League in September. I, you know, I don't think the football is as good as it was prior to two CBAs ago. So, but you know, with that, you know, as as a standard that we all create through our own personal experiences. I mean, that's something I. I tried to look to, so um, it's it's a challenge when your guys don't spend that time together, whether it's in your practice structure or in preseason games. I, I think that's why you know the quarterback position is so important to your practice structure because of the intensity and the tempo and and all that. And I've been I've been very fortunate with the the quarterbacks I've had in the past, and definitely here with Dak. I mean, they, they bring a whole different energy and a competitiveness this to your practice structure and you have to have that because mm -hmm. I always felt that was such a key to get the continuity and the regularity that you're looking for. Mike, we saw Dak early on in camp kind of lobby to do more before he had the shoulder deal. Mm -hmm. How's he been through this? Has he, lately has he kind of tried to lobby to, hey, can I do more? Can I get into this more? I, I definitely. He's a cage line. I mean, he's a competitor. He, I mean, it's just really not the same answer for David. I mean, he, he brings he brings that competitiveness and you know, an expertise to not in the quarterback position, but he makes the whole practice better uh, because the way he approaches it and, you know, just his warm up before practice is game like. So he, he treats it the way you'd, you'd love to see all your players, uh, you know, treat it. And, and you know, he, he's definitely one of the examples you use for the young players. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we heard that live. Um, interesting. I, I will say that Mike McCarthy seems. Um, definitely a little bit edge. I don't know if he's feeling some pressure, if he's mad, but he had uh, touched on that practice has not been real crisp and clean and that they need to do better. They're going to be practicing outside, as he put it, to uh, 
they're going to be playing games out in the heat. You know, you want to get that heat, get that feeling and everything else uh, for the team because uh, it's practicing, of course, not – you go to some of these places early in the season, it's going to be hot. Tampa, it's going to be hot. Okay, It's humid down in there, outdoor stadium. So Cowboys practicing in perfect conditions, air conditioning and all that doesn't help you against uh, Tampa Bay. You can get dehydrated because you're not used to the heat. So that's um, definitely important right there. Um, Connor Williams and Demontre Kazee are both being added to the um, – uh, COVID list right now. Uh, he didn't touch on when players would be able to be activated off of that, uh, but they're trying to definitely get this nipped in the bud because now you've got you know more players. We, now we actually are short on safeties. There's only four current safeties that are on the roster that are actually active, and we don't want to have this kind of continue to go downhill. The NFL, in fact, is making some changes now that and le- as far as like locker room policy and we'll probably see more and more things start to be clamped down with the NFL as more and more play- players start testing positive but outside uh media only media directly um, affiliated with teams are now allowed to even go into the locker rooms and that may even change even harder as we go forward so we'll have more on this a little bit later but wanted to bring you this news that Connor Williams and Demontre Aziz have been added onto the COVID list not good news for the Cowboys two weeks and a day away from kicking off against Tampa Bay as always I want to thank you all for watching the Joe Boo Sports Report I don't get dressed up very often but when I do, it's to go hang with the Pierce. Stay thirsty, my friends.